What's an appraisal? Why I need an appraisal? Why I got to pay for an appraisal? I know what my home is worth. If you ever said these things, put your two piece away and listen to what's coming up next. Welcome to the Zoom Room Podcast. I am host T.R. McCarthy, a.k.a. T.R., the long guy, a.k.a. the mortgage goat, mortgage broker, perceptive mortgage. How are you doing today? Today, I have a special guest online with us. We had a pleasure of meeting about a year ago on a radio interview. I was the mortgage professional. He was the appraiser professional in that interview with Dr. Sharon Barnes. We just hit it off, tried to do some other videos together over the last year, but kept missing each other. But today he accepted and I am happy for it. My next guest is a seasoned real estate professional and appraiser hailing all the way from Ontario, California. He has a 20 year tenure in the industry his mission is to improve, I should say, the actual benefit of the real estate market. He is dedicated and elevating the standards and technology in real estate. We're excited to hear his professional experience and tenure. Help me welcome Mr. The one and only Mr. Lionel Thomas. Mr. Thomas, how are you doing today, sir? Good. How about yourself? Thank you for that. Interview, I'm man. doing That's wonderful. Great. Yeah. Man, it, you look, you you do a lot. Not only do you control and operate your own appraisal company, you are a seasoned real estate professional, um, multiple deals in the works, even as we speak today. Business is good for you, correct? I'm working hard. I'm trusting in God. And um, I think when you put those two things together, business will come. Absolutely, business will come. But it, it's a testament, the fact that you have these deals in place to the professionalism that you you live with day to day, your your convictions, your motivation, your ethics. I mean, these things, just you and I talking over the phone in the interviews that we've done together, you see this, this, this passion that you have. And like I said, the ethics and the convictions that you have. Not many people have that. We've been around the business a long time, two yeah. decades at least for both of us. We know that when people had that, that heart for people that want to do the right things. And when yeah. you see those people, you got to congratulate them and thank them for what they do. So thank you, sir, for everything that you do for this industry. Thank you. I'm trying my best. And uh, I thank you. I ultimately, sometimes when I hear a call to action from families or from people, I think to myself, mm -hmm. like, if not me, then who's going to help them, you know? And I, I don't know if it's like selfishness or how to refer to it, but I, I feel like I don't want to, <laughs> you just kind of, I don't want to not, take the correct action or I don't want someone to kind of fail them. So I feel like I need to step up exactly. and, and do it, you know? So that's kind of what I do. Well, I, I love it because you're also, you like myself, you're like a one-stop shop, no matter what your clients need, you can either do it or you have the things put in place to, to refer yeah. them out and say, Hey, we have somebody who needs this done. Yeah. Um, they want to get an ADU. You, you'll, you'll refer to a Dr. Sharon Barnes, you know, yeah. you need specialty programs for them. You have your realtors and I mean, your, your, your mortgage professionals, in place and of course you're the agent and you're also an appraiser you have the capacity to make these things happen right well i got you uh, I got, um, and you have a, <laughs> a various amount of loan programs that people can use so um absolutely. i have a team and i i try my best to use that team to to the best benefit to benefit the client i should say man i appreciate that i love working with you too so i want to uh like i said really Stay focused on your time because you're a busy man. So I'm going to jump into these questions for you. And right now, out there in the interwebs land, Lionel's going to talk about appraisals, the process of appraisals and the different things that he sees having over 20 years of experience in this, this industry. So please listen up because the things that he's going to say are priceless and will help you in your home ownership journey. Okay? So my first question is, first of all, Tell the people what an appraisal is <laughs> and then kind of walk them through the typical steps involved in a property appraisal and what data collect are, are collected in helping you with your process. 
Okay, that's a multi-level question. So first, absolutely, I know exactly the data collection part, which is the last thing you said, is usually done on the MLS and through property records or through tax records. So an appraiser or a realtor will go onto the county records, will download the details for the subject property. That's why a lot of times when you're calling and asking real estate related questions, and and I don't have or your appraiser or a real estate professional, if you're not sharing the address, they you're kind of in my eyes taking their ability to way to be specific to your problem and solve your specific solution. But uh, once we get the address, we'll pull the records for that property. Then once I have those records, I'll have a base for what comparables or what information um, should be selected to go along with that subject property. And if I'm gonna do a site visit, then I'll go out to the property, confirm those records are true. And then I'll be able to really narrow down what comparables are chosen. Um, the comparables are chosen through CRMLS here in the California region. Um, the comparables are chosen based on your location, your lot size, your year built, your room count, and your gross living area. Then the comparables are kind of reconciled and adjusted, and basically your value is found within those comparables. The appraisal itself is a, a document. It's a certified document by a, by a real estate appraiser who's licensed in that state. And it's all the research and all the details of the inspection, um, the, the MLS research and the reconciliation adjustments put down on a PDF and delivered to you so that you can use it for mortgage lending. You can use it for taxes, for the IRS, um, for family court, if that's what you need to do. Is, is that a good answer? It's always a great answer when it's coming from you. <laughs> this is the truth. <laughs> I'm trying to break it. I think I answered the points that you brought you, up, right? You, you broke it down. You was like, look, okay. you can use it for this, you can use it for that, which is true because yeah. a lot of people don't realize all the things that appraisals are used for. Mm -hmm. um, before I get to the next one, can we piggyback on this particular question as well? Because you can utilize an appraisal, get an appraisal to help you remove the mortgage insurance mm -hmm. from the property. Can you just explain that just shortly as well? Yes, so uh, I, I have at least two orders in my in my uh, database right now where people want to remove their PMI. And the process that I always say is, you know, make sure to get a letter from your lender so you can see what their guidelines are. Obviously, they're going to want an appraisal done. So you get the appraisal. You can get it privately unless, you know, for whatever reason, the lender saying you can't. But generally, people reach out to me and say they want to get their PMI removed. I go out and do what I would consider a traditional mortgage lending appraisal. I visit the property, do a property inspection, document the condition, make sure it's safe, sound, and sanitary, pick between three and nine comparable sales, adjust them, deliver you the PDF, you share the PDF with your lender, give them time to process it and ask any questions, and, and you know, up to the lender's discretion, your PMI should be removed shortly. I, I yeah, guess absolutely. I didn't touch on the equity amount, but can you, there's like a minimum percentage of equity that's required? Absolutely. 20% of equity has to be required. So when you get a mortgage and you have anything over 80% on a conventional loan, you have to have what's called PMI or mortgage insurance um, uh, on your property. If you have an FHA loan, mortgage insurance is completely there the, the whole length of the, 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 the note. So if you have a conventional and you want to remove that extra 100 to 300 sometimes $400 a month, of mortgage insurance depending on how much that house costs once your property valuation goes basically 80 percent ltv or 80 percent loan of value that means you have at least 20 percent of equity in your property you can get a appraisal appraisal and that appraisal as long as it shows that you can submit that to your lender and they will then remove that pmi or that mortgage insurance thus lowering your um, monthly expenses without having to refinance your your loan they can go get that All new right. Tesla they've been thinking about. That new Tesla that they want, that one that costs one hundred fifty thousand dollars, right? <laughs> one hundred fifty thousand dollar Tesla, man, that's what they yes. want. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. So when you're making your evaluations, Mr. Lionel, what are some of the unique factors besides the comparables that influence the property value? Okay. So right before this, this, but right before I got into the Zoom room. Um, I was talking to a realtor client of mine and she was helping advise a client because they're looking at two different properties and kind of, I'll speak broadly, but specific. In this area, the median purchase price was 830. 
but the, uh, one of the homes was asking for like 950. One was asking 880, 899, and I I kind of helped her or I helped explain the justification for the higher asking prices. One of the properties or both properties featured paid off solar. One of them featured a pool, and the other one featured an ADU. So I was trying to help her see. The 830 is the median price, but that median doesn't really represent houses with these specific features like solar, like ADUs, like a pool, and how to, I don't want to say just up, but how to consider how much more you should offer on a home above the median with additional features like that. If you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring the bell notification. Help get this video out to more people looking for the same information as you. As always, if you have any questions regarding purchasing a home, leave a comment in the description. I try to get back to everybody with the question or go to trthelongguy.com and contact me there or in the description is the phone number to reach me directly. I look forward to hearing from you. Make this an awesome day. TR The Long Guy. Signing out.